Love our kings that glorify his name forever. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and give him praise and glory. Open your mouth and give him praise and give him glory. Give him honor. Give him all adoration. Blessed be your name forever. That's not like him. Forever is on the throne. Worthy to be glorified. Worthy to be honored. In Jesus' most wonderful name we have worshipped. Somebody who has come for this time out with Jesus. God will change your story. Amen. You will enter into your season of rest. Amen. Everything about your life shall speak testimonies. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Wherever you have seen shame before time out with Jesus, God will give you testimonies. Amen. Miracles will happen in those areas. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the fourth service, many of you were not here. We were just talking as if we were talking football. And all of a sudden, miracles began to happen. So God can do it at any time. We are talking about, um, was it Chelsea? Was it Chelsea or Baka? We are talking about Chelsea and whatever. I said, Chelsea, Chelsea. Say nobody should miss time out with Jesus because of Chelsea because they are giving up attention to their fans. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm sure even today, I think they lost. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Only God will help Chelsea. Amen. So we are not talking about Jesse, and then all of a sudden, atmosphere just changed. Miracles began to happen. Even if you are a Jesse fan, don't lose hope. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> God will help Jesse. Uh, they will bought all the players, sack all the players, change coaches. This one too, we should help. God will help him. Potichino. He came and sack all the old ones. Think that the only new ones can walk. No way. The new ones do no way. They will near goal. They will not score goal. So. But at the point, it just turned. God just turned. That means it can come anytime. Even me, I was shocked because we were just talking football and then miracles began to happen. Today, while we are talking, something will happen in your life. Yeah. He will wipe away your tears. Yeah. I repeat, he will wipe away your tears. Yeah. That thing you thought would fail, God will end up turning it for a testimony. Yeah. Men have looked at you and said you will end as a non-entity. God will make you a celebrity. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Father, speak to us in this special time out with Jesus. Give each one a word in Jesus' name. Now, before you have your seats, I want to tell this. It's not just conventional teaching. This is a teaching church, but it's not conventional. I want you to have to be open because sometimes you hear something, it just is, you trivialize it. Pick something from every section because... It's not just conventional. There will be something you will hear out of the four or five sections of things I will talk about that will definitely change your life and your relationship with those kinds of people. So I want your heart to be what? Open. Because one word can make you rule your world. Just a striking what? Word that goes, okay, this is what I needed that I didn't know. Okay, this is where I missed it. This is where what I need to put together. And then you just say life go on smoothly. You may be seated. At least welcome your neighbor with a high five. I tell your neighbor I celebrate you. We are not quarreling, so we celebrate. Amen. Even two of you are quarreling, settle now. Are you getting what I'm saying? The easiest way to know husband and wife quarreling, when they come to church, they say, say five. Jesus will say, say five. <laughs> the woman will look the husband do like this. He said, go say five, nine, nine, four. I call him before I have to come for church. He said, go say five. So even if two of you are calling him, please, let the call end in church. When you go home, don't continue again. Now, the message is, <laughs> the message is secrets of lasting relationship. Secrets, that means not only one. We are created by our Father, when I say Father God, to relate with Him. Relationship is a gift given to us. Never underestimate its power. Everything in life has its root in relationship. Now, the foundation. For every lasting relationship is love. Is what? Is love. And he said, if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Psalm 11 verse 3. For no other foundation can any man lay, except that which is laid. Is that through 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11? 
There's no other foundation can any man walk. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is who? Jesus Christ. So everything that must last, the foundation must be Jesus. Must be who? And Jesus is love. For God is love. First John 4, 8. And Jesus giving an understanding from Mark chapter 12, verse 30. He said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind. He said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So if you push this away, you already really destroy the foundation because it is the first what? Commandment. Even when you build a house, you'll say, lay the foundation. Is that not true? He said, I don't believe in foundation, I just put blocks. What will happen? The building will crash. Without love, no relationship would last. Relationship that has its roots on looks will fade. Because looks fade. Looks what? I told you how I used to have long hair and I don't have any more. I wish they have my pictures. Somebody took my album to today. I don't know who took it. I wish you know how my hair was. You know that students have those kind of pictures. You'll be shocked. I used to have very long hairs. If it's money, when the person's giving it stops, the relationship will end. That means if it's money that's keeping the relationship, and one the person I'm not going to give you, the relationship what? Will end. If it is love making, I want to be very wrong, if it is sex, it does not mean relationship to last because you everybody will get tired one day. That there, there's something must be the root. What's the root? Love. The only thing that can make any relationship to last is what? Is love. And love must be known because love is a person. And the person is who? God. Because God is love. Love is not sending tests, I love you. <laughs> love is a person. Until you know the person God, you can't love. There's no selfishness, greed, bitterness, etc. in last relationship. So the secret for last relationship is what? Love. Now, the kinds of relationship we keep will determine our altitude. I'm looking at there are different kinds of relationship. Different kinds of what? And I'll be taking them one after the other so you can know where you belong. Is that clear, sir? I know how to relate. The first A is God and man. God and what? Man, which is man. God and M A N. That's the first relationship. Because if that is not there, every other relationship will not work. Is that true? He started a relationship. He said what? He said it's not good for man to be alone. Who started a relationship? God. So we must go back to him. It's the first relationship was God. He said he wanted to have fellowship with man. In Matthew 22, 37 to 38, Jesus said unto him, Did you hear that? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Now, verse 36. The young girl said, <laughs> look at what verse 36, number 36, which many people don't know. Master, what is the great commandment in the law? He said, which is the great? He said, Jesus said to him, he said to you too, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The origin of all relationship is relationship between God and man. That's why the relationship started. Others take their bearing from it. Every other relationship takes its bearing from this place. Our love for God is what determines the height we attain in life. To have a last relationship with God, you must be conscious of eternity. You know why? If you have a relationship with your spouse and you don't make heaven, it's useless. Is that not true? So the first is that you must be conscious of what? Eternity, otherwise your relationship with, not, with God will not last. So here, in Matthew 24, verse 13, it says, shall we read together? One to go. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So once saved is not automatic salvation. That you made altar call does not mean you make heaven. That's Immediate salvation and there's ultimate salvation. Yes, you gave your life to Jesus. Is that true? 
But if you don't serve God and love him to the end, you are not sure of making heaven. Is that clear, sir? I mean, understand what we're talking about. Glory to God. So, your relationship with God must involve honor and reverence for him. Lucifer dishonored God and was thrown out of heaven. I took time to study what was the function of Lucifer. You know, from before now, I thought, it, you know, they say choir. He was a singer, head of the choir. Did I know what they told you? No, that was not his major function. His major function was to take honor back to God. He was carrying honor to God. So he saw how there were three angels in heaven that played the key role. Lucifer, Michael, and Gabriel. They were the three key leaders. Now, the major work of Lucifer was to send honor to God. So he saw how they were honoring God. He said, wow. So he desired to be honored like that. <laughs> he had unhindered access to God and became too familiar with him. He wanted to receive the same honor given to God. That's why I was old. So his heart was lifted. He said, look, the way they honor God, they should honor me. Do you understand it? That is why his relationship with God did not last. We are just talking this evening with one of my associates and he says something and we looked at it. You know, the moon has no light of its own. Is that true? I hope you know. Now, the moon positions itself via the sun. Then we, what we have as moonlight shines. But anytime the moon tries to change her position, we have eclipse. Enter the moon and say, okay, I want to change my position from where I used to be. Instead of light, there will be darkness. True? So every time you think that you have arrived and you change where you're supposed to be, instead of going forward, you begin to have darkness. I don't understand. The moon does not do any work. All the moon does is the position. So anytime the moon says, no, I want to reposition myself. They have eclipse. You see, instead of having light, what do you have? Darkness. So Lucifer went into darkness. That's what they say is the prince of what? Darkness. Because he shifted from where he was and began to want to want have something else. So relationship ended. May your relationship with God not end. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Dishonor is the first sign of rebellion. The first sign of rebellion is what? Dishonor. Dishonor is a decision to defer and disrespect God. When you love God, you will honor, obey, and serve him with respect. I pray today somebody will take a life transition to honor God all the days of your life. Life is worthless if it's not lived for God. We are created to please our maker, not ourselves. Say, I will love God. I will seek to promote his kingdom. Say it one more time. Those who love God don't seek to promote themselves first. They seek to promote God first. Make a decision backed with action to live for God till your time on earth is over. Say with me, Father, help me never to fall by the wayside. I want to live serving you all the days of my life. Anything that will not allow me, make heaven. Take it off. How many want to serve him till you die? Glory to God. That's lasting what? Relationship. I tell you, Hosea served God to a point, he crashed. So it's not, oh, I started well. Make sure you end well. There are people who serve God for 50 years, and then the 51 year, they backslided. You don't wonder. There are people who have been, been pastors, preach on the altar. And then all of a sudden, turn at the time you don't believe to go the other way. Not half will go completely to the devil. Completely to the what? That you begin to follow. And say, it's not this man that was preaching. None of us will be that kind in the name of Jesus. So me, I want to have a last relationship with God. Now that's the foundation. That's the what? Then from there, we'll now begin to build others. Is that true? Because if this one is not in place, any other one is nonsense. Any other one is what? Says, okay, why, why shall I profit you? You marry your wife, two of you did not divorce to the end, and you went to hell. It's of no use. So, this must, must be in place. So, the first relationship is to rule with God. With God. So, here. B. 
Second stage, mentor and protege. Mentor and what? Protege. That is, for instance, pastor and people under him. For those who may not know what protege you're talking about. A mentor is an experienced and trusted advisor. Because it's very important. A protege is a person who is guided and supported by a mentor who is more experienced than him. The mentor protege relationship is a kind of relationship where the protege honors, respect, observe. Are you writing? And connects heart to heart with the mentor. I repeat, the mentor protege relationship is a kind of relationship where the protege, P R O T E G, honors, respect, observe, and connects heart to heart with what? With the mentor. God has placed people in front of us to learn from them. You will not miss your own mentor. The purpose of mentorship is to stop the occurrence of painful experience. The purpose of what? Mentorship is to stop the occurrence of painful experience. They have gone through it. They tell you don't do that. If you do that, you go through this. You will not you experience it. It's right here. Now, to enjoy a lasting relationship between a mentor, you must do the following. If you want the lasting relationship between you and the mentor, Roman figure one, you know it's B. Listing and follow his or her counsel. Listing and follow his or her what? A counsel. Let me say this to all of you, to all of us. You can read, get knowledge from books, but you get counsel from those who have experienced it. That's why Joseph, sorry, Moses could listen to Jethro when he gave him counsel. Every success or failure is traceable to the voice you obeyed or ignored. Failure in life is traceable to the voice you ignore. Samson ignored the voice of Manon. He said to him, this young lady, <laughs> leave her alone. Judges chapter 14 verse 3 and Judges 16 4 to 31. If I had ignored the voice of Oedipo, today this church would have ended at the glitter. When I went to him, I said, we want to build a, a place for crusade. He just like this, Maru Bredia. He says, my son, stop. You don't do crusade every Sunday. He says, once in a while, church comes before crusade ground. If I said, no, me to God, I hear from God. This church today won't have been where we are. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Whom you love, you obey. You didn't hear me? If you find it difficult to obey someone, you don't love the person. Mentorship is the quickest way to success. Mentorship is what? Look at me and know the ball. There are many things I just observe him and I get them done. Is that true? If I never was close to him, can I, I wouldn't be able to do what we are doing. I hope you know that. Is it my closest to him? True? I just observe him and I'm able to do what he has done. May you never fail in life. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Why mentors is important? Look at the man Elisha when he was following Elijah. If you read the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, you find out that they went from, from Gilgal to Bethel, Bethel to Jericho, Jericho to Jordan. How I many of you know the story? In 2 Kings chapter 2. They went from Gilgal, where they had a point of contact, Bethel, a place where God dwells, Jericho, where victory is given, and Jordan, the end. At every point, do you know that if you ever read that scripture, for those who may not know the story, they were mocking Elisha. They said, hope you are aware that God will take him. So I'll read some, one or two verses so you understand. Look at verse 5, for instance. Verse 5, verse 7. He said, And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha. Do you hear that? 
and said to him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away the master from thy head today? That means it was a known story that Elijah will be taken. It was not hidden. Are you coming now? Are you aware that God will take him away? <laughs> and he answered, Yeah, I know. Hold your peace. You know, when you're following somebody, people will give you a man of cancer. Hope you know. You don't know? A man who your destiny is tied to, they said, the way you're following this man, take your time home. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets, which means they were also sons. I will tell you a life story. When we were in Bible school, Obituelekwa told us to go for evangelism. And then one of my classmates said, this man wants to use us to grow his church. But if I tell you that young man was very close to bishop. Then I was not close to bishop. We are not close. I looked at him and said, this boy, your heart is wrong. But when he sees bishop, he will lie down. Hey, bless her. <laughs> but bishop said, we should go for soul winning. He says, yo, this man wants to use to grow church. I looked at him and said, oh boy, you have to be lying down. I led the most effective and most powerful group for soul winning. So let's see where I am. Are you gonna, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going somewhere. I don't think, I'm going to use this place to prophesy to you. Verse 7, they said, hope you're aware. Look at verse 12. And Elijah saw it, and he cried, my father, my father, the child of Israel, and the husband thereof, and he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into two pieces. Verse 15, for time's sake. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on who? So they recognized that Elisha was coming with an anointing. Is that true, sir? They were all sons of who? Elijah. Only Elisha followed him. And they came to meet him. Who did they meet now? I'm going somewhere. Please be set your heart. And bow themselves to the ground before him. They were mocking him. True? True? But when he came with the anointing of Elijah, what did they do? I decree today. Under this unction, those who mock you will bow to you right now. Stand up. I'm going to prophesy from the depth. Everyone connected to this voice all over the globe in the name of Jesus. Those who mock you by connectivity, then what are you doing with your time? I decree after this meeting, they will bow in the name of Jesus. Listen, there may be even members of this church who will mock you. Not everyone in this church, believe me, don't deceive yourself. There are some who say, forget, we'll just come church because we'll come. But you that believe in the name of Jesus, I decree whatever grace I carry will begin to find replication in your life. The same way God works with me, I don't have to be taken for you to begin to walk. The Elijah's these days have to walk when the Elijah's are alive. I decree in my lifetime, you will do greater than whatever I've done. Amen. God will use you in your business, in your career, in your family, even concerning your life. When you pray, it will happen in the name of Jesus. Amen. My God will put that same unction on your life. Amen. As you remain connected, let your amen be so strong with faith. Amen. In the name of Jesus. As you're living this time out with Jesus, they will bow. They will make obeisance to you. They will see a replication of grace in your life. The ladder, your amen, you have it done. In the name of Jesus. Say the spirit. When you follow a mentor, you know, it was not easy for Elisha. Hope you know. It was not easy for Elisha. Sometimes, when you follow people like us, it's not that simple. We can be very meticulous. We can be very what? Very meticulous. We are very meticulous. All you need is to be patient with us. Because you're looking for something. And when you get it, like today that you've got it, how many of you got something? You know something has happened? Yes. How many know something has happened? You will never be the same after today. You may be seated. Roman figure 2, still on B. Honor and respect your mentor. Honor and respect who? Mentor. You know we are B.O., but Roman figure 2. One, I said, listen and follow what? 
he is our counsel. B, honor and respect your still under B. Hope you are not mistaken anything. Okay. Honor is the seed for access. Malachi 1 6. If I be your father, where's my what? Where's my honor? A son honored what? His father. And his father is master. If then I be your father, where is my honor? And if I be your master, where's my fear? Said a lot of hope. No mentor protege relationship will last without honor. I was talking to my father in the Lord. He said, do you know, even can a Hagen of blessed memory, I still honor him to today. Even when the man is gone, I still talk with him with reverence. I speak about our Archbishop with so much respect. I reverence Copeland. You will see him talk about, I can say that, fathers with so much respect. Yes, let me say this to you. Your success will be traced to the mentor you choose to honor. Honor is the stepping stone on your path of lasting relationship. And let me say this with all humility. Honor is not complete until your money is involved. Did you hear me at all? Honor starts from the heart and ends in the pocket. Did you hear what I said? Honor starts from where? But ends where? Any honor with that does not involve your pocket is deception. Okay, say you love me, you honor me. Then every time you come, even what I know, give me to drink. Thank you. Learn to respect your mentor. They are not hungry. Please let me correct you. But you need what they carry. True? Respect to have consideration for something or someone. Learn to respect your mentor. Respect produces submission and compliance. Respect produces what? Submission and compliance. Who you respect, you easily submit to. Let me say this. What differentiates the wise and a fool is what they have respect for. A fool does not respect. Just talk to the person. Listen. Let me tell you with all humility. She's my wife. We are one flesh. But are we the same in the anointing? No. So she respects me. When you talk to somebody because of familiarity, whatever the person can't walk in your hands. You know why it's working in my hands? Or you grace and all that? Because of respect. She respects me through. You can't carry grace of a man of God you don't respect. Last relationship. And respect is not eye service, so it has to come from where? From your heart. Too much familiarity. Some of us, we are too familiar with the men of God. No, be Papa. I didn't attend bedroom. I didn't even eat. <laughs> we are not made so. I was talking football when miracle happened. You go talk football when miracle happened. I wrote something. Stubbornness is not land. Respect is. You, hear me? you don't learn stubbornness. It's part of you if you are stubborn. But you learn respect. Stubbornness is not what? Land. It's very easy to be stubborn. To be stubborn, you don't need anything. Just begin to misbehave. But respect is land. And many people don't respect anointed men. They feel they are too close. All, you know why Satan did not respect God? He had access to God. Look, anybody who has access to an anointed man, be very careful. Satan had what? Too much, too much familiarity came to Satan's head. Because he had access to God. Check anyone who has disrespect any anointed man. The person had automatic access. Check anybody, even, even in politics, a mentor. Someone who came over, all of a sudden, revolt against the person. It's someone who had what? Access. It's difficult for anybody to revolt against somebody who never had access. Access, most people abuse it. Check anywhere where you see someone start insulting a senior person. The person had access. Are you getting what I'm saying? So be careful when you have access. How can you be close to somebody you don't carry the person's grace? Then something is wrong. So here. Respect allows you to be alert and make the best decisions. Respect is always remembering the, the advice, the warnings, and the wise words that our mentors gave us. 
You can't succeed in life if you do not respect anyone. How many of you respect? Who do you respect? Tell your neighbor, who do you respect? Do you know it's dangerous if nobody can advise you? Every mortal man hear this. Yes, God will talk to you, we know. But you must have somebody who, when the person talks to you, you don't, you don't do it. They say, hey, you can't talk to him. Go and meet this person. When this person talks. In your life, don't get to a point where nobody can talk to you. <laughs> you are heading for a crash. Nobody will give you advice some more. What didn't talk? Now we find out. You are finished. Can I really tell me something now? I say no. Impossible. Can I tell him something? He says no. Impossible. But do you know there are some of us here? Nobody can talk to you. Nobody. You are a lack of your own. <laughs> when you take the decision, is what? Find out. <laughs> you can't, if you do that with a mentor, your relationship will end. That's what I'm going Relationship will not. By the time he talks to you, you say, no. There are people who talk to you and say, well, sir, I won't talk, but because of what you said, I changed my mind. The best relationship will last. This I think relationship is more of honor. More of what? You can give money without honor. But when you honor, your money carries respect. So honor is the major thing that keeps master and what? Protege and mentor. Do you understand now? Sir, so here. God. What did I say? What keeps you and God? Hmm? Love. What keeps you and your mentor? Honor. Then C. Family relationship. Are we getting blessed? I mean, are getting blessed. This is the one you have been waiting for. <laughs> hey, this is the one you are waiting for. Thank you. Family what? Relationship. There are two kinds of family relationship. Roman figure one, husband and wife. Husband and what? Please listen very well because this <laughs> marriage is God's idea. Marriage is what? For it to be successful, it must be based on the principle of love and submission. Listen, let anybody preach anything. You can't take away this principle. Any man that loves his wife, the marriage will last. And any woman that submits to her husband, the marriage will work. But take away any part, it will not last. The entire marriage is summarized in four verses of scripture. Galatians, Ephesians, sorry, Ephesians chapter 5, 22, 25. The entire, that's the summary of marriage. The entire, all about marriage is in those two verses. Wives, Submit yourselves unto your own what? As unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands. In what? In everything. In everything. Everything. Not some things. Please. I know you know Bible more than me. These days now, people know Bible. Pastor, they know even more than God. So when God says, no, 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 not in the New Testament. Here in the Old Testament. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. hallelujah. You must place great value on your marriage for it to last forever. For it to what? You must place value on it if it must last forever. We place value on our school academics because we want to have good grace. We place value on it when we go to work, but we don't place value on a lifetime relationship. Listen, people go to school for four years and they place value and say, I want to make first class. You see, the man studying. He said, first class. How many years? Four years. People place value on their work. They say, no, I work. I want to work very well for 30 years at the time. But marriage is for lifetime. Yeah, they don't place value. That's why it's crashing. Work is for a time, you retire. School is for a period, calendar. But marriage is for what? Life, yet yeah, they don't place value. So they, they deal with it epileptically. Now listen. This one is a quote. When I was studying, it came straight to me and I wrote it. Being married to someone you love is like never ending honeymoon. <laughs> Yeah, 
You can write it verbatim. <laughs> Being married to someone you love is like what? It's like a never ending honeymoon. The honeymoon is forever. It's not this Saturday we are going for honeymoon. It's not one week. <laughs> it's forever. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? One week honeymoon or lifetime? It's much better, better. When we were married, we had no honeymoon. Nowhere to go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't they gave me a hotel of 500, then I wouldn't have been paid. We wouldn't have been able to pay. So, but are we in honeymoon? Yes, we, we have honeymoon for life. Which one do you prefer? One week. All the paraphernalia put for social media. Then two days, you tell me, I'll, I'll, I'll divorce you. <laughs> you will not go that way in Jesus' name. You, know, you can even see celebrities, you do flamboyantly stare up cars, close road, reception, everywhere. Two weeks, you know. <laughs> Want to know what you know is? Find out from the dictionary what you know is. <laughs> All married people hear this. Don't take a permanent decision to divorce your spouse because of temporary challenges. Don't take what? Divorce is a permanent decision. Don't take it because of temporary challenges. Every challenge is overcomable. Don't say no. I'm going to divorce is a permanent. You don't take permanent what? Decision because of temporary challenges. May you overcome what is before you right now. He said the wind came, the storm came, but the man who has the word of God is already to overcome it. Say right here. Let me say this to every one of us. Pay attention to the opinions, observations, and discoveries of your partner to understand them better. Pay what? To the opinions, observations, and discoveries of your partner to understand them better. Develop passion in pleasuring your partner. I'm going to tell you if you want relationship to last. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you something very long, very practical. If you want lasting relationship in marriage, don't think of yourself. Think of the next person. Listen, this we have relationship. Man is very selfish. Man is what? If you want your relationship to last, take yourself off. Always think of your spouse. Think of the person. But every time you think of yourself, relationship will crash. Always think of what I would do. How will I live with this person? What, but every time you take the person out of the equation, you always put yourself up. That relationship will crash. Because selfishness is, is destructive. Selfishness is what? And man is very what? Selfish. Do you know there are wives who never think of their husbands? And their husbands never think of their wives. Even when they are praying, they pray for themselves. I've not seen men who buy food and forget that the, the wife will eat. Yes, it happens. It, those things in the Western world, it happens even here. He will enter fridge, collect drink, and be drinking. Forget that the wife is sitting by his side. Do you know it's unethical? For you to take something from the fridge, I don't ask her, can I bring for you? First sign of selfishness is when you eat alone. That's the first sign. <laughs> it looks simple. You are eating. You forgot your own wife. Who cooked the food? It looks simple. You want to satisfy yourself. You don't remember that somebody is by your side. And if I tell you, be shocked. It grow, that is more with last bonds and families where they have either a boy alone or a girl alone. <laughs> Any family where they have only one boy, the boy has to work on himself because he was brought up alone. So they are used to... So have, look, watch all families where people are, they are very selfish. Or you came from polygamous home. <laughs> or you came from what? Polygamous home, be very careful. Polygamous home. Because polygamous home is survival of the fetus. First come, first serve. So everybody will grab first, go. So when they marry, they forget that there's another person. They try to, you know, nature, <laughs> habit you have formed is not easy to change. You know, if you came from polygamous home, whoever meat food first, eat. So they forgot that they are married. It looks simple. He's eating. He has forgotten that the person has not eaten. Some don't even ask, have you eaten? 
He said, just give me food. <laughs> do more cook food for you. Do not ask her whether she has eaten. He said, this man is so selfish. Always think of what? The next person. He said, what you want others to do to you, do for them. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. Let me read that scripture. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall it be of the world, but they be born or free. Is that true? So try to do things for other people. Don't always. Are you get what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That will relationship with what? Will last. Say so here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Glory to God. I said, develop passion in pleasuring your partner. Develop what? In pleasuring your. Now let me say this. You know, we're talking about relationship. Can I be very raw? Can I be very raw? We're talking about pleasure. Do you know, listen, because of children, I'm a bit decent. Even when you are in the act, look at the face of your partner. Are you hearing me? It's better for the woman to be satisfied first before you. Otherwise, there are divorce. The woman cannot talk because if they talk, they say she's a bad woman. But it's good for the woman to be first okay before you. It's selfishness to be okay and forget the woman. Did you hear what I talked about? Because women are not, they will not express themselves. Because if they say, they say we are born again, so they think they must bad women, so they bottle up and they react after a while. They say, Sai is so selfish. He just thinks of himself, but he gets up and gets away. It's a very useless man. When you see a woman talk like that, she has gotten angry. He say, I don't care about the cars he's buying for me. I don't care about what he buys. He's so selfish and self-centered. If God did not want it for satisfaction, why did he put it in your body? You think God is not wise? For him to put those things on you, man, he gave you those things to satisfy your wife. Are you holier than God? He said it's not good for man to be... You know. Let me say this. Sex is not sin. It's only become sin when it's done outside marriage. Sex is not sin. Read your Bible. Sex is not what? It becomes sin when it's done outside marriage. Sex is not sin. I think you want to hear. Last thing. So people with divorce. This is what divorce them. So we are talking about... Okay. This is bring divorce, so I hope you know. You don't know? There are some people, you buy them everything. If you don't do this one, they say, let him get lost with his money. Get lost with your money. She would just say, go get your money and get out. So, take time to settle this matter. Church will not preach it. That is the last relationship. Church will agree to preach this part. They will go there, come out. Of. So, people, women will die in silence. Do you know something? Life story. One of the biggest men because church, even not the biggest men because church, the top women came and said, Pastor, we want you to preach to our husbands. I said, ah, You have big, big pastors. They said, I will leave, Pastor, now you won't make a bridge. I said, Why? You, you say it wrong. Not just they say, Love your wife, submit to your husband. You, you don't talk like you, you tell us. So, we will not die here. I will look at them. <laughs> Come and preach to us. I said, but I'm traveling that week. For later, I will have to travel out of the country with my family. They said, no, I, we want you to. These are serious, holy quoted women. Oh. They don't wear earring. None of them wear earring. They know that type. They wear like there's no earring. But they say, we are dying. Our husbands don't understand. What you, when you preach on television, we listen to you. Come and preach. So, people die in church. They die in church. It's in silence. And women die more. Women, what? All the men hear me. Look at your wife's face. Look at what? You don't look like say, what are you talking about? Sin. <laughs> look at the face of your whore. When you, next time, look at the face of your wife. If you like, you hear. I think it's the last thing. <laughs> <laughs> What is that? What is that? They fly somebody. 
Okay. Oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Right, let's go on, please. Let's go on. Can I go on? Listen. The more time husband and wife spend together, the more love grows. The more time husband and wife spend together, the more what? Love grows. Love, respect, honor, and defend each other. Love what? And honor and defend each other. Hear this. Focus on the strength of your spouse and not on his or weaknesses. Focus on what? The strength of your spouse, not the weakness of your spouse. What you focus on determines your feelings. Let me say this. Marriage will die without proper communication. Marriage will what? Relationship will die where there is no communication. Don't talk to somebody for one month. You'll forget the person. <laughs> Hope you don't. Let me say this to all of us. Never betray a shared confidence from your spouse with another. Never what? If your wife or your husband was able to tell you something confidential, don't ever share it with anybody. Even when you're quarreling. If you see a woman open her mouth during quarrel to neighbors, she's a very useless woman. There are things you don't talk to third party when the person confided in you. Are you going to say now? He told you because you are his wife. She told you because you are the husband. That small problem is a come. You see, this is my wife. You see, this is my wife. You know, she told me. <laughs> you are telling somebody, no, don't do that. She told you in confidence. She told you what? No matter the quality, don't say it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And for women and men, listen. Why you should communicate is because don't expect your spouse to read your mind. Don't say you should know. No. Silence often waters the root of bitterness. Talk it out. If there's anything you don't like, what do you do? Say it out. Just say it out. Don't say me, I like to keep quiet. It's demonic. It's what? Say it out. Don't say I like to be quiet. No, say it out. Once you say something, it's gone. Because the one you keep quiet, the person can know. She put food and the food was not sweet. Just say, my, my wife, this food is somehow, don't say, I keep quiet. My wife should know that I, the food is not, is she a mind reader? He does something you don't like. Tell him, I don't like this thing. It's there. Don't say, my husband should know. He's not a mind reader. Nobody reads mind. He said, you're a magician. And if you're a magician, you can't know. Because God is the only one who knows all things. So I hear. You know why I say so? Matthew 18, 15. Shall we read together? Moreover, if thy brother shall what? Read together. Want to go? Hello. Shall hear. That's good. So two of you should discuss it. Did you hear what the Bible said? Don't carry what your own spouse told you to Todd party. Some women even tell their friends what their husband told them. Do you know my husband cannot perform? <laughs> oak <oak-may> woman. <laughs> you are a woman called what? Oak-may. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. One major challenge that affects lasting marital relationship, you'll be shocked. Why I wrote it different is God gave me this word after I finished the message. So I know that there must be, the Holy Ghost gave me this word. 
Then I, I said it in the morning. Then I knew that God wanted to speak to so many people about it. I was just moving and he said, this must be added. One major challenge that affects last relationship is not departing from plater ties. From what? Everybody listen. All married people. All married people listen. Genesis 2.24 and Matthew 19.5 and 6. You read it. I know you know it's in your head. Read now. One to go. Most of us say man. He's talking about man and woman. Hope no, the Bible refers to man and woman, man. So he's talking about two of you. Don't say he's talking about men. He's talking about the both of you. Because the Bible does not say man and woman. Are you guys now? It's just a male and female. But when it comes to man, it's a God created man. When it's talking about man, it's a man shall live. It's talking about including the woman herself. Are you going to have said now? Read Matthew chapter 19, 5 and 6. One to go. Is it all of us reading this Bible? All of us read. One to go. Verse 6. Shout hallelujah. Many have left their homes. The homes of their parents physically. But have not left mentally. Many have left the homes of their parents what? Physically. But they have not left mentally. The children of Israel left Egypt physically. But every time they encountered challenges, you hear them say, it were better, rough, if we are in Egypt. Many, you hear them every day, it would have been better if I was in my parents' house. You now wonder, why did you marry them? Do you know till today, many married people don't refer to their families as the family of the married. They refer to the prayer they are coming from as their families. Till today. They say, you know, my family wanted to do something. You now wonder, you will be waiting. The family she's talking about is her parents. The family is talking about is what? His parents. No. That was your family. The marital owner is now your family. So you hear me on the altar. I say, when I used to have my other family before I became married. That is not longer your family. Your family is your wife, you, and your children. So I hear. Are you all hearing what I'm saying now? The other one are your parents. You have to honor them, but they are no longer your family. Every little thing, I'm going to our, our house. <laughs> parents also hear this. Stop encouraging your children to come back home. If this thing will not work, you better come home. <laughs> That's why divorce is so high. If it's not, why will you tell her to come? Instead of giving her counsel for it to work. You say, if this is not working, I better pack your things, come back. <laughs> Every, you say, man, so you are a tata. Many tatas are married. So every small thing, I go go my papa's. Two of you sit down and resolve the matter. So I hear. Because if you go with the mindset that this thing is forever, you find the answer to it. Shout hallelujah. Well, I have a small word for, for singles. Or do I take single as parents or children? Let me say parents or children. Two, before singles. Let me close with singles before friends and I close. Two, what? Parents and children. Let me take parents and children before I come to singles. Singles will not take me one minute. Parents and children. Ephesians 6, 1 to 4. We are talking about relationship. You know, there's relationship between children and parents also. Hope you know. Children, let's do together. Want to go? Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Verse 2. Honor thy father and mother with the first commandment with promise. Verse 3. That it may be well with thee that thou mayest live long on the earth. Verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Colossians 3 verse 20. 
Colossians 3.20. Shall we read together? Children, obey your parents what? How many things? For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Obey them in how many things? How many things? How many things? We choose our friends, but God decides our parents. It's one area you don't decide who will become your father. <laughs> he decides. Otherwise, some of us would have chosen our fathers. True? <laughs> some of you would have preferred to be born by Donald Trump. <laughs> I told a young man, the way he was doing, doing like that, I said, yeah, oh boy, your father Donald Trump. <laughs> he was doing big man, big man. I said, come. Now you were the boy for bias, and I did do like this. I said, your father Donald Trump. So I used to make laugh. I call his first man and say, so, so Trump. <laughs> so he now changed his character. He would do big man. Everything about him, big, big, big. I say, yeah, Donald Trump again. <laughs> now, listen. You can choose friends. You don't choose parents. God decides who is your friend. Since you have decided, you should know how to work with them for life. Is that true? Hmm? No matter how your parents are, as a child, you must honor them. There's a parental blessing in honoring parents. Your parents can disown you, but you can't disown them. They can say you are not my child, but you can't say you are not my father. I wish we know this. That's why in the West, they're having too many problems because they talk to parents anyhow. No last vision. And parents should also accept responsibility to train and provide for their Family relation will only last when there's care, love, respect, honor towards each other. Shout hallelujah. For the singles, <laughs> for those who are eligible to marry, I don't like, I, don't, I think we should stop using single. All those who are preparing to marry, I think it's better. Let me say this to you if you want, last, if you want to have last relationship, marry only who you love. Don't marry because all your mates are married. <laughs> you know, sometimes people, this all my mates are married, anyone that come, I will marry. It will not last. Marry only, you have waited till this age, calm down. God will give you. Don't say, no, I'm, I'm getting tired. Anywhere the man come, I go marry him. Then they part you. They don't part marriage. It's not more to wear you on a beat and spray. <laughs> marry only woo <laughs> love. And let me say this. Singles hear this. Never enter into marriage with the mindset that if it does not work, I will back out. It is failure from the beginning. Never have a plan B when you enter marriage. Then, look, I can tell you from the day you have that mindset, you have, divorce has started. If this thing will not work, I will. You have already divorced. From that first day you wedded, you've divorced. Everybody with that mindset, they used to divorce. Well, let me go. If it doesn't work, I'll back out. You have already entered with what? From the beginning is divorce. Because you already have a plan B. Don't get into marriage with plan B. No plan B. That's what they call it wedlock. Wedlock. They call it what? You don't open. No way to open. Word. Two of you. <laughs> Young people, are you hearing me now? Yes, because I deserve so many people they go with that mindset. Well, well, let me just marry him. If it doesn't work, I'm going to back out. <laughs> eh, you have already started on the wrong note. It's already failure from the beginning. Finally, number four, which is D. Are you blessed? How many of you are blessed? Then the last relationship is friends. What is it? I said God and what? Man. Then mentor and protege. Then husband and wife. Then friends. D, friends. And we close with it. How many of you are blessed today? Glory. Say glory to God. 
Friendship should be earned. You earn it. Someone should earn friendship. Someone should not just get up and say, I'm your friend. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. Shall we read together? One to go. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. And are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Verse 13. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Shout hallelujah. No relationship keeps you neutral. Iron sharpened iron. Wood will never sharpen iron. Proverbs 27 verse 17. Let me say this. Listen to the statement I want to make now. It's not from book I wrote this. Listen. Every relationship has an unspoken word of jealousy. Write it. Has a spoken word of what? Rivalry, hatred, bitterness, or genuine love. Every relationship has what? An unspoken word. It's not said with motto of jealousy, rivalry, hatred, bitterness, or genuine love. Check any friend you have. There's something of this thing within them. They didn't tell you. But some of them are competing with you. Some of them are jealous of you. Some of them hate you. They are your friends, so they hate you with so much. And very few love you genuinely. They didn't say with their mouth, but they're anxious. It's unspoken. It's what? You buy dress. They want to buy the same dress. If you say you have done this, they compete with you as if two of you just... It's the rivalry you can see. Even amongst ministers, you see it. If you say you do this, the next month, the man wants to do, he will even come on television and say, this thing this person did is not correct. This one I did is very correct. Yet two of you are close. So you go for those who genuinely love you. Who are not competing. So I hear. Mm. I've seen even men of God who are close to me who have this nature. They are close to me, but the jealousy is high. The rivalry is ungodly. The bitterness is out of this world. The, <laughs> the hatred, too much. Don't mind him. What is he even preaching? May God give you those who love you. Yeah. And let me say this to us. I'm talking about friendship. Lasting relationship demands you reprove with sensitivity. You reprove the what? When you want to correct people, be sensitive. Be what? Because criticism hurts. Correct with love. Correct what? Don't say me, I like to correct. Let I like to correct. No, no. Correct. Correct with love. Somebody is eating and making sound. Don't say that's why I don't eat with you. You can't be eating with you, you be making sound like this. No. No. No, someone when they eat, you can't be able to, you won't be able to eat them. Correct with it. He said, no one eating. It's better if there's no sound. There's a way you've been correct. The person will even be laughing. But you correct, the person's spirit just goes down. Everybody likes correction with love. There's a way you correct. When you climb the altar to speak, do you know you spoke the worst English? You are so useless. You don't even know how to speak. The man said, hey, so now, even if you want to correct me, I'm still going to talk to me. Where, and people are there, next time you climb the altar, don't speak like that. How can you say it's what's coming? <laughs> Amen. Shout hallelujah. Good relationships pays way for you in life. Let me say this. When right people enter your life, right things happen. When what? Right things happen. When wrong people live your life, right things happen. May right people enter your life. Yeah. But failure occurs when wrong people get close to you. There are four kinds of people in your life. 
Therefore, what? Those who add, subtract, divide, or multiply in your life. Nobody lives in the trial. Four kinds of people. Those who what? Everybody who is a friend of yours, either adding, subtracting, dividing, or multiplying. No neutral. There are four kinds of people. So everybody around you asks, this person, what is this person to me? Adding? So you two, when you're close to somebody, ask yourself, am I adding, subtracting, dividing, or what? Multiplying. Here this and the other way. Avoid those who don't accept, respect, and protect your assignment. Anybody who does not respect your assignment, protect your assignment, accept your assignment, avoid the person. Do you hear what I'm talking? Avoid those who don't expect you to achieve much in your assignment or life. There are people, they believe that you will never amount to anything. Avoid such persons. Are you hearing me, sir? The apple, as your prayer says, we don't believe that this person will make any. <sniffs> Avoid them. They believe you will never amount to anything. For any. So, brother, we draw from contentious people. We draw from what? They make no friend with an angry man. We draw from contentious people. I tell people, you are, not, you are not the only one who should be getting angry. Everybody has a right to it. There's no monopoly of anger. There's no what? He said, make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man. That shall not go. Hey, wah, wah, wah. But every time, every time you're shouting, no, no, you are not the only person. They didn't make you shout. Other people drew the seat and left. You, you, are, you correct, look, listen, listen. You can never have a last relationship if everything you see you correct. No. There's nobody, including you, who is perfect. If everything has to be perfect, then there's no point for man. Man is man. You keep copying. So why do you keep copying? They mistakenly pour water. Don't, 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 don't you know that you're not clean? Don't, 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 are, you, are you blind? Mr. Perfect and Mrs. Perfect. <laughs> I told somebody, <laughs> he was complaining bitterly. He said, Sir, this person called me. This person called me. This person, he was talking, I don't fold it. I said, No, the problem, you are the problem. He said, How? I said, You are the common denominator if everybody is calling you. That means all of them cannot be wrong. You are the one who is wrong. You are the common what? You are the one who's calling you because everybody cannot be quarreling you if you are not troublesome. I said, I told him, I said, you are the common denominator. He said, hey. I said, yes, sir. Your wife quarrel you, your friend quarrel you, your colleagues quarrel you, and you're thinking that everybody's wrong. You are the one who's wrong because all of them cannot be wrong. Make no friendship with such persons, <laughs> they, will, they will contaminate your life. They are contentious. They are what? There are people who enter an environment, the place is tensed. They didn't say anything, you know, as they come in like this, atmosphere will just change. Even when you're talking, you say, nah, I don't know what I'm talking, I will cause trouble here. <laughs> so, if you're sitting down, you are just there. Ah. The person's heart is suspended till the person leaves. No, no, no. When you enter a place, there should be peace. Don't enter a place everywhere. Tell. Don't say, you know, I like, I'm disciplined and you, you are not lying of the type of the house. <laughs> you enter a place, the, the place is so test. Is that a good spirit? Oh? Is that a what? In case you have it, I pray you come out of it. Yeah. You enter somewhere, people are not relaxed. They are on their toes. They say, I'm tough. You are not tough. People should be relaxed around you. They slept on the, on the laps of Jesus. He stayed with them. They say, you come somewhere, everybody... The day you go, they say, Thank God. Thank God he just left. Yeah. Since he came, we cannot even eat food. <laughs> Have you not seen people who all the food in your house they did not get fat? Once they left, they got fat. 
That means your house is too tense. Are you hearing me? Well, let me round off on this note with this statement. For any relationship to last, take down and we're done. Forgiveness, write it. Forgiveness, integrity, kindness, and courage where the guidance of the Holy Spirit must play a key role. I repeat, for any relationship to last, learn to forgive. Learn to what? Integrity. Kindness. Learn to give. Relationship won't last. If any relationship without giving will not last. Let me tell you, no matter you pretend, any relationship without giving will not what? Will not last. Any self-relationship will not last. Courage. Be able to always tell the person it is possible. And always be guided by the Holy Spirit. You know why? The Holy Spirit gives you courage and strength to withdraw from unprofitable and wrong relationships. He will tell you this person is not useful to you. Proverbs 14 verse 7. That's the last scripture. It says, go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceiveth not in him the leaves of knowledge. May you come out of foolish people. He gives you wisdom needed to maintain right relationship. That's why when you get close to people, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray what? This person is of what you of what use is to me. You want relationship to last? You've had it all. Have you had it all? You know how to maintain relationship with God? Love him all the days of your life. You know how to maintain relationship with your mentor? Honor your mentor in your heart and everywhere. You know how to relationship with your husband and wife? Love and submit. You know how to maintain relationship with your friends? Okay, what do, what do we leave to talk now? <laughs> That's how you know whether you're able to get the lectures. If you want to have a last relationship with your friend, what do you do? Connect with love. Connect with love. Connect with what? Love. Be kind. Be patient. Are you understand now? And with these virtues, you can maintain a lasting relationship. Rise to your feet. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. How many of you are blessed today? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? How many of you are blessed? Go back to your north. Go through it. Over and over. I have a last relationship with the people. Hope you know. Most of my colleagues faded halfway. I've maintained it and I've maintained the time and eternity to just come. Sell through. Lord, the things I've heard, I receive grace to put them to practice. Go ahead and pray that prayer. The things I've heard, I receive grace to put them to practice. Go ahead and talk to God in the name of Jesus. The things I've heard, I receive grace to put them to practice. Are you speaking to God in the name of Jesus? Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. If you really mean it, you can put all of them to practice. One thing with the word of God is don't get angry with the truth. Don't get what? Don't ever come to church and you are told to get angry. You will never change. One day I was in, ch- in class, Bishop Edipo came and said, Listen! You will never be a great pastor moving from Shomoli to Barega. That was the exact language you used. Shomoli is in Lagos, the commercial city of Nigeria. Barega is also in Lagos. <laughs> if you must be great, sit down at your assignment. That's how to be a great pastor. And I love to move before then. I just like to move. I like to drive from mainland to island, island, and move again. But I didn't get angry. I didn't say, look at him, because God has blessed you. He said, we should not move. You know, you can, you can get angry and say, you don't mind him, it's comfortable. That's what you say, how can I not move? How will I get money now? I said, this is for me. I didn't say, why will he talk to me like that? Is it because God has blessed him now? He said, we should not move. If I don't move, how will money come? You know, you can always have reason. 
But I didn't get angry. That was my, the turning point of my life. Today, I don't go anywhere. If you want to see me, church, airport, guys move. But to not sit down, say, oh boy, I, won't, I can't greet on a how on a dinner. I didn't do it yesterday. Not that you don't say that, oh, it's, now it's comfortable. Even when I, we had no food to eat, I never did that. I sat on my assignment. So some of you that you have some things that maybe hit you like this. Even in marriage, true? Maybe at the time you are just so selfish. So you are so selfish. He said, why didn't you talk to me? Because he didn't be pastor. No, no, I'm not a pastor. That thing they told you that hit you, boom, is the area God wants you to change. Some of you know relationship? You don't even know how to maintain relationship with mentors. Is that not true? Hit and run. When you want prayer, you go get close to the man of God. Once you get the prayer, then when you get problem again, you come for the man of God again. Say, man of God, you know I love you. I submit to you. I do this. You pray, pray, pray. You go, pam, pam. You go again. The man, next time you come, he said, tell him, don't you see me, my friend. Do you know there are pastors who enter my bedroom? Hope you know. You don't know? Huh? And there are pastors, anyhow they do, they don't enter my bedroom. If they come, they say, um, in Jesus' name, keep him in, in reception. There are pastors, they don't need protocol. They call even when I'm eating, they sit down. Not because of they have more money, but because they honor me. They honor. You don't honor me, then I will not allow you to enter my bedroom for what? Now you born me. <laughs> there are members of this church who have access to my bedroom because of honor. Because of what? Honor is you can give somebody money without honor, but they can't honor without money. I honor you from my heart. Have you ever seen me talk about you negatively before? Eh? If you have the spirit of God, have you seen it before? That's why I, I saw him two weeks ago. Two of us sat for almost two hours talking. As busy as that man is. I enter, I don't enter, I don't go, I don't stay in reception. No. I don't stay in open parlor. We're still up. Mama will come. There are people who come, my wife will see them. There are people for where? Lie, lie, no one near himself. Honor who your mentor. Don't be staying swear. You stay with people. Your own mentor, you'll be discussing the person. You see your head, they shine on. Yeah, yeah, in, in go they talk from morning to in the living tire. You are doing go they talk, print, 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 print. Four services in talk, now five when they talk, see in head, now see in head they shine. <laughs> now they go talk, print, 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 because God don't bless them. Then when you see me again, you go greet me, say, Papa! <laughs> That is high level of hypocrisy. If you want to see hypocrisy, go to Lagos. Just go to, there's no hypocrisy in any part of the, in Nigeria and other parts. Lagos. Lagos, they will see you like that, say, hey, 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 you see hypocrisy of the highest order. They will kneel down and greet somebody. Yet in their heart, they say, I will not mind him. I will deal with him. If I tell you, you'll be shocked. I've never knelt down. I bow to greet him with respect, but I don't understand. But my heart, I kneel. One of the people is talking to me, 95%, I'm not standing. I do, except it's just, you know, I, when he wants to pray, I must go on my knees. If he is praying for me, I must go on my knees. Because if I'm standing before him, will I be standing? No. It's honor, and I don't do it with hypocrisy. This is respect. It's not human worship. It's what? Respect. Some of you know respect. You are too familiar, too close to the man of God. Please, I beg you. It's better you are far from a man of God than get close to him and become disrespectful to him. Stay far. Stay what? So you don't carry crosses. Men of God are very funny people. Though. You didn't call them. Home. When you start disrespecting them, the oil on them will fight you one day. It's that powerful. Is that what? So it's better you're not close to them. How many of you are blessed? Have I done some counseling? You know where to go now? Husband and wife, no more divorce. Some of you used to call it. The call it will end today. <laughs> will you laugh with your wife? It's a new beginning. Say, it's a new beginning. Now I stand in my office. Everyone that was missing it, I decree you come online. Every family was at the verge of breaking. I command it to be mended. 
I decree restoration to marriages. Even families where children and fathers. Now listen. A young man in this town, a politician, his father and him quarreled. The Holy Ghost dropped that for me to pray for you. Quarreled that they went to court. Open court. The father is late. It was a known national story. They went to court. And he came to me. We school together in government comprehensive. And he came to me and said, Sir, I don't know. The man my father respect most. Talk to my father. He said, No. <laughs> Nobody can talk to my father for us to reconcile. I smiled. I used only one scripture to pray. And I said, Go, your father will embrace you. He said, Sir, this year's matter, we went to court. I said, Go, your father will embrace you. He said, He went. The father stood by the door, like brother brother's son, and opened his hand and then called him. He said, Ah, Papa, do you know this matter how many years? The young man respects me. Once in a while, he comes to church. He's a politician. That was where he respect me too. Because say, you mean my father can reconcile with me before he died. Are you going to sit down? Two of them became closest friends. I don't know any of you who even your parents are angry with. I declare by the unction of the Holy Ghost there will be reconciliation now. Yeah. I'm getting a word of knowledge. In case your parents were angry before they died and spoke some words against you, please, when I'm flowing in the spirit to be faithful. And spoke some words against you that affected your life. Now stand as your spiritual parent. I decree the things they spoke that destroyed you and kept you where you are be averted by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. If there be any word pronounced on you that kept life so miserable, that made you not to succeed the way you should succeed, I decree, I stand in my office as your own spiritual father. I command such things turned now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. He said, where about sin I forgive? Heavens will forgive. I stand and I decree mercy will precede over judgment. Yeah. Now listen, there's a woman hearing me. Your husband told you for insulting him, not to work for you. From that day, your life turned upside down. Today, I stand more face, things will work in your favor. Yeah. You have cried, you don't even know that that was the word that kept you, you're miserable. Now in the name of Jesus, everything spoken against your life, when I'm flowing like this, please flow with me. Today, I command them cancelled totally. Yeah. There shall be a release of deluge of blessings and favor. Yeah. A refreshing over your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. The very area where life was miserable is the area God will lift you. Yeah. And there will be total restoration. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Now the first reconciliation is between you and God. It's between you and you must be born again. Reconcile with God. Man and God separated through sin. It's through confession and repentance that you can reconcile to God. Wherever you are, you have not met Jesus. Pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I've come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from there to save me. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. If you offer that prayer, keep standing. Others take your seats. God bless you.